the word of the Lord from us to us today is taken from the two lessons that were read to us. The book of Esther 1, 10 to 22, and Luke 18, 1 to 15. What is God telling us here today? God is reminding you and I that He understands our needs. He knows our spiritual needs. He knows our physical needs. He knows the material things we want and the ones we need. But the message is crystal clear today to you and I. Our Lord, our Savior wants us to put everything before Him before we make a decision. The world is telling you and I today that the key to our breakthrough is in our prayer unto God. The key to your breakthrough, the key to your spiritual progress, the key to your physical progress, the key to your material progress is in your prayer unto God. And nothing else. The first lesson. On the seventh day, yes. when the heart of the king was merry with wine, yes. he commanded Mehuman, yes. Visa, Habuna, Bigtha, and Ab Ab Abagtha, Zetha, and Karkas, the seven chamberlains, that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king, okay. to bring Vasi, the, king, the queen. Now the king had been drinking with his bodies, and he now commanded his servants, go and bring me the queen. Go ahead. To bring the queen before the king with the crown royal. Okay. To show the people and the princes her beauty. Now, I'm not sure if it's the fact that he had been drinking or he had another agenda. But at that point in time, he wanted to display his queen to those who were around him. Yes, go ahead. For she was fair to look on. Yes. But the queen Vash, uh, Vashti refused to come at the king's command. He says the queen refused to come at the what? At the king's command. Yes. By his chamberlains. Yes. Therefore was the king very rough. Yes. And his anger burned in him. Now this king was angry. Because he sent for the queen. And she refused to come. Go ahead man. Then the king said to the wise men. Then the king said to the wise men. Which knew the times. Which knew the times. For so was the king's manner towards all that knew the law and judgment. Yes. And the next one to him was Kashina. Yes. Shethar. Yes. Admatal. Tashish, Merz, Masena, and Mem uh, Memukan, the seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face and which saw the first in the kingdom. Yes. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti? Now the king is trying to make a decision. He's asking his wise men, what shall we do unto the, the queen? Yes. Because she had not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlain. Okay. And Memukan answered before the king and the princes. Yes. Vashti the queen yes. had not done wrong to the king only. Yes. But also to all the princes and to all the people that are in all the provinces. Now, this these so called wise men are making matters worse. <laughs> Instead of just trying to settle the issue amicably. Between, amicably between the king and the queen, they are, they, they are not, they are, again, they are the wise men. They are now saying, okay, this queen has disrespected her king by not obeying his commands to come because he was under the influence of wine. And now the, 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 the wise men have said, oh, because this queen has done this, now all the other women will now see what she has done and now be doing the same thing to their husbands. Yes. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, okay. so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes. Yes. When it shall be reported, yes. the king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to yes. be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, yes. which have heard of the deed of the queen. Yes. Thus shall there arise too much content and wrath. Thank you, ma'am. Now you. let's quickly go into the second lesson. And, he spake a parable unto them. and Jesus spoke a parable unto his disciples, saying, Unto them to this end, yes. that men ought always to pray. It says that men ought always to what? To pray. And not to yeah. faint. Take it slowly. And not to what? Faint. Faint. Go ahead. He's saying, yes. there wasn't a city or judge yes. which feared not God. It says there was a city and there was this judge who had no regards for God. Who had no regards for human beings, and yes? Neither regarded man. Okay. And there was a widow in that city. And it says, and there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him. And she came unto this unjust 
judge, yes? Saying, Saying, avenge me. Avenge me. Of my adversary. Okay. And he would not for a while. Yes. But after what he said within himself. Yes. Though I fear not God. Yes. Nor regard man. Yes. Yes, because this widow troubleth me. Yes. I will avenge her. He says, because he's even admitting that he doesn't fear God. He has no regard for what? For man. But because this widow has been disturbing me day and night, I will what? Avenge her. No. Thank you. Let's pause there for a minute. God is telling you and I. Yes, we come here to worship God. We come here and we praise Him. We come here and we put a smile on our face. But every one of us has something that we're looking for. Every one of us has some kind of justice that we're seeking from God. But what is God saying? We should continue to pray. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. We all know the story of Hannah. She was looking for a child. And what did she do? She prayed. Now when God has granted you that thing which you are looking for, like in the case of Hannah, he granted her a child. Those of us who are looking for children, by his grace, he will grant us children. Amen. But we need to pray unto him. We need to pour our hearts onto him because he's the only one that can do it. Yes. It's not a matter of going to look for wise men. It's not a matter of going to look to look for witches and wizards. It's not a matter of going to look for herbalists to solve your problems. Maybe if the king had consulted God, the outcome would have been different. Yeah. But Christ is telling you and I today, that thing which you are looking for, pray unto him. Cry unto him day and night, and he will give it to you. Amen. But we also have to look at it from another angle. When you pray, 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 day and night, you fasted, God has now given you that thing which you are looking for. That is when you even have to pray the most. Because trust me, when he has given you that child you are looking for, when the child comes into this world, there are witches, there are wizards, there are forces of darkness that don't want that child to give you peace. Yeah. There are forces of darkness that don't want that child to live up to a certain age. Yeah. There are forces of darkness that are trying to use that child as a source of sorrow unto you. That is why you and I should pray more. Yes. There's a story of a lady who recently lost her son at the age of 11. He was in a boarding school. All he was doing was playing and doing backflips. And he died. Recently, in the news, in some part of the world, a little boy, four-year-old, was attacked by dogs. By the grace of God, he's still alive today. But the sight of his injury is not even something we should be talking about. Are you looking for a job? God says, the Bible says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and, and, and what? When you are looking for that job, when you are praying for that job, Job, give me, God, give me this job that will enable me to serve you. Give me this job that will give me the opportunity to worship you. God will now say, okay, this my child has been crying out to me. He will now bless you with that job. That job that will provide an opportunity for you to grow. That job that you have a passion for. Brothers and sisters in Christ, that's the time you should be praying more. Because trust me, at your place of work, there are people who just don't like your face. There are people who just feel you shouldn't be in that position and be earning that much money. There are people out there who are attacking you spiritually so you won't have a job. Because obviously, when you don't have a job, you don't have a source of income, you can't pay your mortgage, you can't pay your bills, then you're homeless. That will not be a portion in Jesus. But that's the plan of the enemy. That's why when Hannah was looking unto God, she prayed. She prayed unto God and he answered her. He blessed her with a child. We all know the story of Elijah. Elijah prayed unto the same God. God of yesterday, God of today, God forevermore. Amen. Elijah prayed that he shouldn't rain for what? For three and a half years. And God answered his prayer. Amen. Is he not the same God of yesterday? Amen. Is he not the same God of Elijah that you and I are serving? Amen. So what is it you're looking for that, the, that, that God cannot do? Pray unto him and he will answer your prayers. Amen. Are you looking for a spouse? Pray. Day and night, pray unto God. He will answer your prayer. Amen. But again, like I said, 
when he has not provided that spouse for you? People who, 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 who in the past they think you are good looking, they want to come and damage your marriage. People who in the past you may have spoken spoken to them and asked them, they want to come and damage your marriage. Friends, colleagues, relatives. That's when you and I should pray more. The key to your breakthrough, the key to my breakthrough, is in our prayer. First Kings 17. From verse 17. And it came to pass, yes. after these things, yes. that the son of the woman, yes. the mistress of the house, fell sick. Yes. And his sickness was so sore, that there was no breath left in him. Okay. And she said unto Elijah, And she said unto Elijah, What am I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Okay. Are you come unto me to call my sin to remembrance, and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Yes. Give me thy son. Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom. Yes. And carried him up into a loft. Yes. Where he abode. Yes. And laid him upon his own bed. Okay. And he cried unto the Lord. He says, And he cried unto the Lord. And said, and said, O Lord my God, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned, okay. by slaying her son? Okay. And he stretched himself upon the child three times. Yes. And cried unto the Lord and said, And cried unto the Lord a second time. O Lord my God, O Lord my God, I pray thee, I pray thee, that this child's soul come into him again. Okay. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. He says, And the Lord heard the voice of who? Elijah. Elijah. And the soul of the child came unto him again. And the soul of the child came unto him again. And he revived. And he revived. This is the same God of Elijah that you and I are worshiping today. There is nothing impossible for God to do in your life. There is absolutely nothing impossible. He prayed the first time. God heard him. He prayed the second time. God heard him and restored life into that child. Does God recognize your voice? Does he recognize my voice? Are we the type that only when we need something, we will now pray to God? Then God will now say, wow, who, this voice is strange to me. <laughs> or are you the type that is always praying to God day and night, disturbing God? It's just God. And even when you kneel down to pray, God will say, ah, my child, what again? You want this? I've done it for you. Amen. May prayer never be far from our lips. Amen. God answered Hannah. God answered Elijah. Yes. God has answered you and I in many ways. Yes. The fact that we went to bed last night and we woke up this morning, it means if you prayed before you went to bed last night, and you're alive this morning, that means he answered your prayers. Some people didn't pray last night and they went to bed and they're no more. I'm sure when you left your house this morning, you say, Ah, God, you prayed unto him, lead me to your house and worship safely. You are here. When the secretary made the announcement, he didn't make announcements of our members in an accident or our members who slept and didn't wake up. That's because we serve a prayer answering God. On my way to church this morning, we ran into unusual traffic on Route 1. As usual, when as you're driving, the road is free. When you hit a certain point, you see traffic, you, you begin to wonder what's going on. It's either an accident, it's either construction, or you know whatever it is. But at some point in time, a, a tow truck passed. I told my wife, I said, ah, this is probably an accident. She said, maybe. But normally, when there's an accident, you see a tow truck, you see ambulance, you see the fire trucks and things. But as soon as, as we drove forward, we saw a vehicle. Obviously, he didn't hit another car. But I, I think somehow, somehow, something must have happened and it caught fire. Almost half of the vehicle was, was gone. But many of us drove from far and near today. God did not make that our portion. Because he answered our prayers. God knows what you need even before you ask. The same God that answered Elijah is the same God that has answered many people who are looking for one thing or the other in this church. Is it the fruit of the womb? He has blessed them. 
Is it jobs? He has blessed them. Is it their great cards? He has blessed them. Is it spouses? He has blessed them. Is it cars? He has blessed them. Is it houses? He has blessed them. But when he gives us these things, that's when our prayer should double. Because that house he has given you, the enemy doesn't want you to live in that house. That car he has given you, the enemy doesn't want you to drive it from point A to point B safely. But he has not made this our portion. Thank you, Father. When we pray, let us come to God with a humble heart. Verse 9 of the second lesson. Luke 18, verse 9. In their own to some who were confident in their own righteousness, yes? And looked down on everybody else. And they looked down on everybody else. Jesus told this parable. Jesus told his disciples these parables, yes? Two men went up to the temple to pray. Okay. One a Pharisee yeah. and the other a tax collector. Yes. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. Yes. God, I thank you. It says the Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, when, when, hold on one second. When you are praying to God, you are supposed to come with humility but this guy was thinking that it's because of who he is he, go ahead God I thank you yes that I am not like the other men yes robbers he's thanking God now <laughs> that is not like the other what Amen. Yes. Robbers. Yes. Evil doers. Evil doers. Adulterers. Yes. Or even like this tax collector. Or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I fast twice a week. And give a tenth of all I get. If God does not want to answer your prayer through fasting, He won't answer it. If you are praying and saying, God, but this person is a sinner, he commits adultery, fornication, he lies, he's stealing, he's cheating. Guess what? At some point in time in your life, you've done some of those things. So let us be careful when we are praying. Let us be careful when we label people. Is it adultery? We have all committed adultery at some point in time. The same one I told us last week, it's not until you lay with a, a man that is not yours or a woman that is not yours before you commit adultery. By looking alone. Yeah. <laughs> when you look so much to the point that in your heart, you begin to imagine things that are not happening, <laughs> then you have committed adultery. Is this stealing? Every one of us has stolen at some point in our lives. If you've never stolen, raise up your hand. We have all stolen. Is it in our tights? Is it idolatry? At some point in our, in, in our lives, we consulted the so-called wise men, the wise women, the ones in the city that make things happen, the people that own the land. In as much as God said, the earth is his and the fullness hell. There are still some people that feel that they own the land. If you don't go through them, nothing happens. It says I fast twice a week. Yes, go ahead. 13. But the tax collector stood at a distance. It says, but the tax collector stood at a distance, yes? He will not even look up to heaven. He won't even look up to heaven. That's how much reverence he had for God. He felt he was in the presence of God because God is everywhere. Yes. God is everywhere. Yes. He won't even look up to heaven. Yes. But beat his breast and said. He says he beat his breast and said. God. God. Have mercy on me. Have mercy upon me. A sinner. I am a sinner. Not like the other guy who said, Ah, I'm not like these people. I'm not like the uh, idolaters. The those the thieves. The this. The that. He said, Have mercy upon me. When you approach God in your prayer, approach Him in humility. Yes. When we recite Psalm, when we, 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 we pray the Psalm of David, Psalm 51, what was the first stanza? It says, have mercy upon me, O Lord. When you come to God using those words, you have to come in humility. You have to come with a broken heart. You have to come believing that it's only God that can answer your prayers. You have to come believing that there is no other God but the Almighty Jehovah. Go ahead, please. I tell you that this man, yes. rather than the other, yes. went home justified before God. Yes. For everyone who exalts himself, it says for everyone who exalts himself, will be humbled. Will be humbled. And he who humbles himself, and he who humbles himself, will be exalted. Will be exalted. Thank you. This other person came in prayer. He humbled himself, and God is saying, because you humble yourself in prayer, He will exalt you. 
when when you when, if, even when you use others to pray, you tell God, this person was looking for a child. You bless them with children. Do mine for me the same way you did for this person. Yes. Yes. This person was looking for a house, was looking for a car, was looking for a new job, was looking for a new business, and you bless them. Yes. The same way you did for this person. Because you are the God of yesterday. Yes. You are the God of today. You are the God of you are the God forevermore. Do for me the same way you did for this person. Let's not go around or 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 let's not kneel down and start praying to God and saying, ah, but this person is this. But how do you know? How do you know they've not repented? God answers prayers. Sometime last year in my job, <clears throat> a team of people they, in, in my team, they decided to promote two, two people because the business was growing. They needed more people to do certain things. You know, so they came to me and this lady who was also a member of the team. And she was known for her trouble within the team. So my manager at that point in time, she called me, she called this lady, she said, okay, we're looking to make these changes and we need people to oversee the team. You know, would you be interested? I said, yes. You know, obviously when there's a promotion, you expect more money and, you know, all that. So who doesn't want a promotion? So, but I thought to myself, I said, how will I work with this lady? She's troublesome. May God forgive me. I'm saying she's troublesome because I experienced her trouble. I'm not labeling her. I said, ah, how will I work with this lady? I said, even the skills to oversee these people, I don't think I have it because number one, I was the last person to join that team. All the other people had been there in the company before me. I said, okay, I prayed about you. God, let your will be done. So months later, my manager called me and she called another person gave the same speech and I'm looking, okay, ah, you called me a few months ago, myself and someone else. Now you're calling me and this new person. We're looking for two people to oversee the team. Would you be interested? I said, no problem. You understand? But I prayed about it. I said, God, grant me the wisdom, grant me the knowledge to do this work well. You know, and by his grace, the promotion came. Hallelujah. And it, 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 it came to a point where the lady, now that she had to report to me, she wouldn't want to take instructions. <laughs> and me being the type of person I am, and in as much as the culture was a certain way, people feel until you use certain words before you get the attention you need. And someone walked up to me someday and said, you know, I know you don't curse, but I think once in a while you have to curse to, <laughs> to make things happen. <laughs> and I looked at him and I laughed. I said, only if this guy knows where I'm coming from, and only if he knows the God I serve, he won't be telling me what he's telling me, because to me it's a waste of time. I'm not going to jeopardize my service, my character, because of, you know, but where am I getting to? At the end of the day, she was let go. Nope, I wasn't happy to see her go. It's never a good thing to see anyone lose their job, because you don't know what they're going through. But the moral of the story is that I felt I wasn't qualified, and I prayed. I told God, I said, if this promotion involves working with this person, you know, I don't want a situation where I'll have to say certain things that are not right. Or I'm sure you all understand where I'm coming from. You know, but I prayed and he answered me. There are many other aspects of my life where I've prayed and God has answered. And I know you all have prayed to God and he has answered you at some point. But the interesting thing about this God we worship it's not every prayer you answer. Oh, yes. When you are praying to God, He searches the heart mm -hmm. and He looks at your motive. Oh, yes. Are you praying for financial blessings so you can oppress? <laughs> there are some people that say, Ah, when I make that money, <laughs> they won't hear. Oh. <laughs> they won't hear. <laughs> are you asking for a car because when God gives you that car, you now start parking. In... It's even better if you park in the shepherd's parking lot. Because the leader that he is, you smile and okay, park. 
But instead of parking the shepherd's parking spot, you start parking the opposite direction. Or you start parking the middle of the street because now you have a car. You ask your children or you're asking for a child. What is your motive? God searches the heart. And that's why I said, it's not every prayer he will answer. If your motives are not in line with his will for you, if your motives will not bring glory to him, then those prayers will not be answered. Second Corinthians, story of Paul, verse 12. It is not expedient for me to double verse 1. 2 Corinthians 12 from verse 7. Oh, okay. To keep me from becoming conceited. Yes. Because of this <coughs> To keep me from becoming conceited because of this surpassingly great revelation. Yes. There was given me a thorn in my flesh. Now this is Paul talking. There was given me a thorn in my flesh. Yes. A messenger of Satan. Okay. To torment me. Yes. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. Paul said three times he pleaded with the Lord to take that thorn in his flesh away from him. Now this is Paul. This, this, this is one of those people that I would say back then, the, the way God appeared to people, the way God revealed himself to people they were closer to, to God. How much you and I? Paul is praying three times. You are looking for something. Don't just pray once and think it will be answered. Disturb God. Like the unjust uh, judge said this woman keeps coming, she keeps stopping me, she's stopping me. Let me just even answer. Pray unto God. Let God know your voice yes. before you even open your mouth. Yes. But he said to me, Yes. My grace is sufficient for you. He says, My grace is sufficient for what? For you. For, you. for my power is made perfect in weakness. He says, For my power is made perfect in weakness. Yes. So when you are seeking something from God and you haven't received, Maybe after searching your motive, think about why God may have not given you that thing. Maybe he, he might want to glorify himself through that weakness in you. As long as that weakness or that flaw, be it spiritual or physical, is not a stumbling block unto others. Let God hear your voice. Let him know your voice. Matthew 26, verse 38. The story we're all familiar with. Then were there two thieves crucified with him. 26, 38. Then said he unto them. Then Jesus said unto his disciples. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful. At the point of death, Christ is telling the disciples, yes. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful. Okay. Even unto death. Yes. Tarry ye here. Okay. And watch with me. Yes. And he went a little further and, and fell on his face. Christ went a little further away from the disciples and he did what? Fell on his face. Fell on his face in humility. He didn't, he, in as much as he's who he is, or he didn't rub shoulders with God. Yes. And prayed. And prayed. Keep going. Saying. Yes. Oh my father. Oh my father. If it be possible. Yes. Let this cup pass from me. Let this cup pass from me. Go ahead. Nevertheless. Yes. Not as I will. Yes. But as thou will. So even when we are praying, hold, just pause there. We should also pray that the will of God be done in our lives. Because sometimes what we're asking for is not what God wants for us. In some cases, he knows that if he gives us that thing we're asking for, we will turn our backs. Go ahead. And he cometh unto the disciples. Yes. And findeth them asleep. Yes. And said unto Peter. Okay. What could ye not watch me one hour? Yes. Watch and pray. Yes. That ye enter not into temptation. Yes. The spirit indeed is willing. Yes. But the flesh is weak. Okay. He keep, went, keep going. He went away again the second time. Now this is Christ going away the what? The, the second time. time. So if Christ can ask for the same thing multiple times, don't think you just kneel down and pray once and God will automatically answer it. You have to disturb God. Go ahead. I'm praying, saying, Okay. Oh my father. Oh my father. If this cup may not pass away from me. Yes. Except I drink it. Okay. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Yes. He came and found them asleep again. He came again. He found his disciples sleeping. For their eyes were heavy. Yes. And he left them and went away again. Uh, okay. And prayed the third time. Yes. Saying the same words. Thank you. God bless you. Christ prayed the third time saying the same words. 
I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. Yes. <laughs> we shall never hold them. <laughs> Isaiah 62. Okay. From verse 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. Okay. They shall never hold your peace day nor night. Yes. Ye that make mention of the Lord. Yes. Keep not silence. Keep not silence. And give him no rest. Give God no rest. Till he establishes. He will answer your prayer. Till he makes your praise in prayer. If Christ, the only begotten Son of God, prayed about the same thing three times, you and I should be praying millions of times about the same thing. He's the God of yesterday. He's the God of today. We will continue to answer our prayers. Amen. Now in conclusion, let's all quickly go into the book of Jeremiah 10. Jeremiah 10 from verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you. Okay. O house of Israel. Yes. Thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord. Learn out the way of the heathen. Yes. And be not dismayed at the sign of heaven. Okay. For the heathen are dismayed at them. Okay. For the customs of the people are vain. It says, for the customs of the people are what? Vain. Are vain. vain. The customs of the wise men, the customs of the, of the false gods. Go ahead. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. Yes. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Yes. They deck it with silver and with gold. Yes. They fasten it with nails and with hammers. Now this, this are, imagine human beings using what God has created to make gods. When it was God that created the heavens and the earth. Yes. Go ahead. With hammers that it move not. Yes. They are upright as the palm tree. Yes. But speak not. Yes. They must needs be born. Yes. Because they cannot go. Okay. Be not afraid of them. Yes. For they cannot do evil. Yes. Neither also is it to them to do good. Yes. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord. Yes. Thou art great. It says, Thou art great. God is great in all ways. You know what? For the sake of time, let's leave that. Read it on your own when you get home. The sermon I told us last week. Let's be kingdom minded. Every day you pray. In your prayer, pray that at the end of time, when everything is called to account, that you will not be found wanting. Pray to God to lead you to his kingdom. As you pray that prayer, all those things that might prevent you, a Christian from entering the kingdom of God, God will begin to reveal it to you. And you begin to pray against those things. If you've ever boarded a flight, you are taking a flight, aeroplane, most of us have, except maybe children that are born here. You know the first thing you do is what? You buy a ticket, right? Mm -hmm. Even when you are buying your ticket these days, either online or at the kiosk or whatever, they ask you for an ID, right? You buy your ticket, you go to buy a ticket, you show your ID, they have to, they have to make sure your picture matches and everything. On the day of your flight, you go to the airport, again, they'll check your ticket, they'll check your ID, make sure it matches, they'll tell you how many luggage you're entitled to, is it two, is it three, is it 50 pounds, is it 70 pounds, in your hand luggage, they'll tell you the items that you can't, you can't carry chemicals, you can't carry drinks, you can't carry, so on and so forth, you go through security, they'll scan you, you'll take off your shoes, and all these other things, now, I liken that to preparing yourself for the kingdom of God, when you first call yourself a Christian, it's like you making that decision to buy a plane ticket. You obviously have to make sure you have your identity card when you're going to check. As a Christian, what is your identity? Is it lying? Is it cheating? Is it stealing? Is it fornication, adultery, idolatry? What is it? You're, for you to be considered a Christian, your identity has to be in line with what God expects of Christians. Yeah. As you begin to walk, the Christian walk, there are things that are expected of you as a Christian. Same way, as you are going through that security checkpoint, there are things that are expected. You can't go through security and be shouting and be making noise unnecessarily. 
they will consider you a suspect. <laughs> you know, there are certain things has, that identify us as Christians. So, if you have called yourself a Christian today, what is your identity? Pray to God to help you live that life of a Christian. Because just like the seminar said, you have to be kingdom minded. And the only way for you to be kingdom minded, like the seminar said last week, you have to pray. Pray to God. Let him hear your voice. Let him see that you are making the conscious effort. Trust me, if you are praying to God about the same thing a million times, he will answer you. As long as your motives are right. The same sermon I said, uh, the person that gave us the sermon last week said, some years ago when he was give, um, delivering the word, he said something very interesting that I held on to. He said in this world, on the earth, at some point in time, it's daylight, like we are here. Some other parts of the world, it's night time. He said, but when you are praying to God, he said, imagine God is looking at the map of the entire world. And for every time someone is praying, there's a blinking light. So God is looking, ah, somebody is praying unto me from Nigeria, from Australia, from the US. He said, wake up at odd hours. Wake up at 12 midnight, wake up at 3 a.m. He says, pray to God. By that time, everybody's, most people are sleeping. So now, there's a map that is dark. And there's a blinking light. Would God not say, ah, this person is supposed to be sleeping. He'll pray. He'll answer you. If it's daytime, when everybody's going through the rush of the day, take time, pray to God. When you're driving, pray to God. Before you eat, pray to God. Before you sit on your chair at work, pray to God. Because daytime, when everybody's supposed to be walking, and God is seeing all these short, short prayers, that means he's seeing blinking red lights. Because trust me, if you don't pray about everything, God will not direct you. The food you eat, pray about it. It might have been poisoned, meant for someone else. The car you drive, pray about it. Someone might have been going after someone else and coincidentally, your car looks like that person's car that they're going over. Then they remove the nuts. Then God forbid, accident. <laughs> pray before you enter. It might sound like a joke, but we have to pray about every single thing. That's what Christ is telling us today. Yes. Is it your marriage that is shaking? Pray about it. Because let me tell you, there are people who don't want you to be with that person. Is it your job? Is it your children? There are just some people who are agents of the enemy and they just don't want you to experience the goodness of God. Yeah. And the only way to survive this dangerous world that we're in today is by praying unto God. I thank God for the, His grace upon every member of this parish. Amen. We will never have any cause to sorrow. Amen. He will continue to answer our prayers. Amen. Day in, day out, He will never leave us alone. Amen. But brothers and sisters and Lord, the word of God is straightforward. In everything you do, pray. put God first and pray unto him. Amen. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. Amen. Jehovah. Jesus Christ. Holy Michael. Father, we bless you for your word. Teach us how to pray to you, Lord. Let us believe that there is nothing that you cannot do. Because you are God that said you can do all things. And nothing is too hard for you to do. We praise you. We thank you, O Lord. In Jesus Christ's precious name, I have prayed. Collections of things.